Well, welcome back to uh, day seven of this epic road trip. The tour of the Sunshine State is now over and done with, all done and dusted. And I'm now heading from uh, just north of Brisbane to Coffs Harbour on the second last day of this epic road trip. Uh, update on the car, all is well, it's still running fine, just no overdrive, no headlights, no front sway bar. Um, otherwise it seems to be fine. I'm in a world of pain. Old age, or who knows what. And, uh, getting through Brisbane was, uh, an interesting exercise in the end, it turned out all right, but you certainly got to have your wits about you. you. Don't know what lane to be in, don't know where you quite... The nav vans are pretty good, but um, nevertheless, I... but it, it, in the end it went quite smoothly. I'm now on some sort of freeway heading south, and my goodness, it's a boring piece of road. Right, that's live. Now I've just passed the uh, exit to Surfers Paradise. So somewhere off to my left used to be Surfers Paradise International, International Raceway. A fancy name for a, a, a little racetrack in the middle of nowhere. But anyway. Right, I never competed there, but I certainly went there as a spectator once. I, I think it was 1976, but I could be wrong, it could be 77. Um, in those days, the Australian Touring Car Championship ran for the first part of the year, and then in the second half of the year, they ran Endurance Championship or something. That was like a Bathurst and the Sandown 500. And, um, anyway, they had an endurance race uh, at Service Paradise, and I was a young person. Drove my Mini Cooper S up from Coffs Harbour to uh, spectate at uh, Service Paradise. Now, my memory of it was that they had like Big Earth Bank along the straight. And everyone drove their cars up onto this earth bank. A lot of paddle vans parked backwards so everyone could just sit in the back of the paddle van. Well, I did the same. Drove the Mini up there and sat on the bonnet and uh, watched the touring car race. Now, the touring car race at that point were two-door Falcons and uh, Tiranas. Uh, Jack Brabham was racing a Tirana at that point. I remember the Holden Deal Team Tiranas. And I remember John Goss's Falcon. Uh, I don't remember many other Falcons. The Dollies were racing. Ron Hodson, Dolomites. Um, and yeah, it was my first race meeting that I ever been to. So it was an interesting thing. Um, of course, Service Paradise Raceway is now a sort of housing canal development because it was built in a real flood prone area. Um, so when you look at it on Google Map, it's sort of like they dug all these canals and built houses and whatever. So it's long gone. So that was that. Anyway, I'll continue on this mind-numbingly boring freeway, which is getting through the K's quick, but my goodness. Um, I'll continue on this, and I'll catch up with you a bit further down the road.
Well, welcome back to this uh, epic road trip. It's day, uh, what is it, day seven. I'd just like to uh, sort of talk about the uh, tour of the Sunshine State. A four day event and such an epic thing to organise. So thank you very much to everyone that was involved in putting that event together. It was sort of like an epic thing to do. Just the road book itself is like a novel. And so much else went into it. It was just great. I can't imagine the amount of work involved in surveying that route. Um, how many times you would have had to driven over it, my goodness. <laughs> um, so thanks to everyone involved, both in the getting it ready, and, and which was epic, and then during the event itself, the uh, you know, driving over it, the, the set up car and sweep car and officials, control points, my goodness. Thanks a lot for that, great stuff. It's sort of my, my last hurrah when it comes to these sorts of things. Um, combination of a whole lot of reasons. Seems like I'm falling apart, so I can't see myself doing this sort of thing again. So it was great that it was on and that I had the opportunity to do it. And, uh, anyway, I'll uh, catch up with you a little bit further down the road. Well, welcome back to uh, day uh, seven, I think it is, of this epic road trip. I'm on my way back from the end of the tour of the Sunshine State, which finished on the other side of Brisbane, and now I'm on my way to Coffs Harbour, and I've just come out of Grafton. Um, on my right hand side here is Boom Boom State Forest. Now, way back in time, when daylight stage rallying was sort of a new thing and rallies would start with a daylight stage as a bit of a novelty before the proper rally got going. And one year Grafton's rally had a section in this forest and actually followed the road that is parallel with this highway, just 100 metres in. Now I was rallying my Leyland Marina at the time, and I'd been rallying it for a while, and one of its problems was it was very low, and the best way to fix that, I put the engine up in the engine bay, remade the engine mounts. So the engine went up, but I didn't put enough thought into the gearbox bracket that had to change too because the angle and everything well I buggered that up basically and we've done the daylight stage out here and on our way back into Grafton basically that bracket tore away from under the car and the whole engine and gearbox were wiggling all over the place now I had a navigator who was a dairy farmer and a service crew guy who I used to work with and they fixed it during the service point. They made this bodged up bracket that sort of leave it over the torsion bars and held the gearbox in place. And it was such a great bodge up that it actually stayed that way for, I don't know, months afterwards before I made a proper bracket. And we certainly finished the rally on that night. So, yeah, the past day. <laughs> oh well. Fun of games that we had. Alright, I'll catch up with you a little bit further down the road. Well, welcome back to. Uh, this epic road trip. 
now I'm just going past the Grafton Airport Tunnel. Now, years ago when I was a very young and very silly, I lived with my parents at McLean, which is north of Grafton. But I was still a member of Coffs Harbour and District Sporting Car Club, as well as Grafton Sporting Car Club. So I used to go down to Coffs Harbour to the car club meetings. Now I had a Cooper S Mini, and on this particular occasion, the, uh, I came out of the meeting and the battery was flat. So everyone push started me, the alternator light wasn't on. So I just thought, no worries, the alternator will keep them going and I'll drive home. Well, that wasn't the problem. The alternator wasn't working at all. I don't know why the alternator light was off, but it was. End result was, I was running on a, a flat battery already. And so as I'm coming out of Coffs Harbour, the lights are getting dimmer and dimmer and I'm young and stupid. They go, I'll make it, I'll make it, you know. And so I latched onto the back end of a semi-trailer. It must have been empty because it was low flying. And I'm just off the back of this semi trying to keep up with him. And anyway, by the time I got to the airport turn off there, not enough power to run the electric fuel pump no more, and the mini stops. Now, like I said, I'm young and stupid. I'm 21, 22. So I get out and start walking, there's 10 caves to Grafton, and I'm gonna walk, you know. Yeah. It's about 11.30 at night by now. So I'm walking. Well, a couple of cars go past and I stick my thumb out. Well, of course, no one's gonna pick up a long hair and hit me walking in the middle, middle of the night along the highway. But anyway, a car went past, and a couple hundred metres down the road, he stops. And I think, oh, great. So I run along, you know, I must have scared the crap out of him and peered out of the dark. And, uh, hey, mate, can you give me a lift, sort of thing? Well, he hadn't pulled up to give me a lift. He pulled up and he ran out of petrol. And he was filling his ute up out of a 20 litre drum. He sort of reluctantly gave me a lift. Anyway, he dropped me at the McLean turn off and that left me a couple of k's to walk home. So it's getting really late now. Now I get home, the old man's just in bed asleep, you know. And this is sort of, uh Well, the old man had an HQU, but it had no petrol in it and there was no garage open at that time of night. My sister had a Ford Cortina, uh, late, 60s. And it had petrol in it. And now we had none of the, the battery out of the hold and wouldn't fit in the mini. So we got a tow rope and we took the Cortina, went back to where the mini was, hooked it up and started towing. So the old man towed me with the Ford Cortina back to McLean. I don't remember him being all that upset about it, but it probably was. Anyway, second story about the airport turn-off. Now, sometime in the late 80s, I had a Dolly Sprint, Triumph Dolomite Sprint. I still own that car. Now, it was my motorsport car and my transport. It had a roll cage in it, driving lights on it, a black bonnet. It was still really just a dolly sprint. It wasn't like modern day rally cars that are built like for a rally. It was a road car with a cage in you know. Anyway, I got a job in Sydney. I was unemployed, living the, the hippie lifestyle out in the bush. No electricity, the whole works. Great life. And I got a job in Sydney. Now it was three months' work, and I thought, oh, that'll set me up for paying a few bills and what have you. So it was a Sunday, and, or a Saturday, I forget. I was going to start work that next Monday. I came out of that airport turn off onto the highway, 
and a police car was going the other way. And the dolly used to be a police magnet. I don't know how many times I got pulled over in the dolly. I never got done for anything, sort of. Um, they just pulled me over, looked at the radio and looked at the, my license. I never knew why it happened, but anyway, it did. So I go onto the highway, and as soon as I turn on the highway, the cop car goes the other way. I look in the mirror, lights come on, Yui comes in the mirror. Okay. So I pulled over, there's no gravel pit there from when they built the highway. I pulls over and so the copper pulls up behind me. He gets out of his car, puts his hand on the gun and yells at me, Get out of the car! And I'm sort of, oh, shit, what am I doing? So I, I climb out of the dolly, you know, climb out of the dolly. And his whole attitude completely changed once I got out of the car. Now, my theory is that they were looking for somebody driving a yellow car that was a bad person or something. And once I got out of the car, I no longer fitted the description, you know. I, I really don't know what happened, but he changed like that. And he sort of then just wandered up, that oh, nice car, mate, you know. He's as friendly as anything. And, you know, and I sort of give him the story, oh, I'm on my way to Sydney to get a job, I've been unemployed. And, and everything, and, and he said, oh, that's great, mate, you know, it's been quite a nice chat, really. But I suppose he needed to do me for something, so he wandered around the car, and one of the tyres was bald. And, but even then, he only gave me the, the lowest thing you could, which was a, a defect, and all I had to do was sign a piece of paper to say I bought a new tyre. And I was on my way to Sydney to start a new job and have some money, and, so it all presented me with no real problem, so that's what I did. I drove off to Sydney, got a job, bought a new tyre a week later or two weeks later when I got paid. So that's my stories about Grafton Airport turn-off. Alright, I'm on my way to Coffs Harbour, I'm 50 odd K out. And uh, so this will probably be the end of this day's little stories. So uh, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Welcome back to this epic road trip. Uh, it's the final day, day eight. On the, uh, downhill run now. Been an interesting time. It's probably my last hurrah in relation to doing something like this. So uh, that's life. The aging process is an interesting thing. It, it's it's a matter of things being taken from you. You're as you get older and you can't do this and you can't do that. It's like someone stealing something from you. And things that you've done that you have not able to do it anymore. Whether that's just financial or whether it's uh, health related or whether it's the loss of um, sort of motivation to do those things. In one way or shape or another, those things get taken from you. And they may be things that don't matter. They might be, I'll never drive a forklift again. I'll never drive a bulldozer again. But those things don't blink on my radar as things that, that matter a bunch. The fact that I'll never rally again or even do an epic trip like this again or Those sort of things do blip on the radar and, and sort of go, well, that's a shame. And all the sort of uh, propaganda that comes out about a living life to the full and, you know, get stuck in you, you know, and all that sort of 
stuff that you sort of get. Well, it doesn't matter how determined you might be. sort of tackle whatever it might be. If you either haven't got the money to do it or you, your health makes it so that it's not fun anymore, when the hassle factor or the pain factor outweighs the fun factor, uh, you stop doing things. That's another thing taken away from me. I never sort of knew that when I was younger. And at any rate, it's happening. <laughs> and uh, so, this epic trip is pretty well the last hurrah, I think, for this sort of thing. And yeah, it's too hard by myself anyway. That doesn't mean I won't. He's still doing some car club stuff, but it's just not this sort of thing. Oh well, that's life. Don't talk to me about life. Life's a piece of shit when you look at it. Life is one long process of getting tired. I could go on with life quotations, but I won't. Alright, I'll catch up with you a bit further down the road. downhill run now all over by the shouting all done and dusted for this epic road trip eight days on the road seven motel nights no idea how much petrol it adds up to world of pain But I'm still going. The car's still going. Not much to talk about today because it's all freeway running. Just cruising along doing oh, 100 k now. Or our car's revving its head off at three and a half down the river. Still got a bit to go, but. Uh, Facing the sunlight again, again a bit. And I guess that's about the end of this story of uh, eight days driving a Triumph through uh, all sorts of different country. It's been an adventure. And uh, that's about the end of the story. So, uh, Bye for now.